If you are into science and you love a good tidbit, this next book is going to fit the bill for you. Eve is taking readers through 200 million years of history and science. It is a myth-busting, page-turning adventure explaining exactly how female bodies evolved and how they work and all the science behind it, which I love. Author Kat Bohannon is joining us this morning. Great book. So many great nuggets to pull out of there. We only have four Thank minutes. Thank you. So let's start back in 2012. You were watching a Ridley Scott movie. You decided yeah. you needed a user's manual for the female mammal. That's quite an origin story. How did it inspire you? So, big sci-fi fan, and you know going into these movies that it's not going to go well for basically anyone, yeah. right? So you're prepared for disaster. But the main character at one point shambles up to this, like, med pod, where she, because she's been impregnated with a squid, as you do, <laughs> right? And so there's tentacles and stuff. But before then, she asks for a C-section, yeah? And the med pod says, beep boop, this med pod is <laughs> calibrated for male patients only. And I hear a woman behind me go, crap, who does that? Yeah, actually, who does that? Who sends a multi-trillion dollar expedition into space yeah. and forgets that it works on women and men, ideally. Yeah. And, well, that's us, actually, because yeah. there's such a thing as the male norm. Most of our medications have never been properly tested on female bodies. We're only studying males in the lab. Yeah, let's get into that a little yeah. bit future because uh, further, because where, do, where else does that go using the male norm as a baseline? Yeah, so um, you would think sexism. Okay, that's an old story. Yep, sexism, it exists. <laughs> uh, but it's also true that it's a way to control for the messiness of the menstrual cycle or the estrus cycle, that hormones go up and down in female mammals. So the easiest way to control for that in your experiment is to just not have the females in there. Right. Sounds crazy, but it's pretty much what's been done for about a half century, but it mm -hmm. is starting to change, finally. Yeah, we are starting to learn more about mm -hmm. that, and there is more funding going to women-specific health yes. research, which is great. Um, I love this tidbit. You say that women typically outlive men because female bodies are better at not dying. So the, the, the current belief is that because males are risk takers, especially in their youth, that yeah. they will die sooner. But your research found something different. Yeah, well, this is my research based on thousands of amazing labs, to right. be clear, so I'm synthesizing here. But no, um, yes, behavior's a thing. There are, in the mammal world, uh, boys doing dumb boy stuff, older males doing other dumb male stuff, aggression, right? But actually, this seems to be true even in lab animals who are isolated from bad choices, right? Okay. That actually seems to have something to do with the immune system and how our bodies repair them themselves. Men and boys actually get more infections across their lifespan. That's true in global data, and it's not just diagnosis bias. And when they get infected, their prognoses tend to be a little bit worse. And then there's the cancer. They get more of that, too. Mm. So it's actually true that there is a deep resilience in the female body, and which is probably why we live longer. That's fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of great tidbits in here as well. For example, that only two species have menopause humans, we know, and killer whales. There are like four species of uh, toothed whale, but we know the most about the killer whales. Okay. Yeah, so they have menopause like we do. The big deal with menopause isn't that the ovaries shut down and we stop having babies, though we're obsessed with that. Mm -hmm. It's actually that we're just not dead. We just keep living past that. Congratulations, ladies, you're still <laughs> not dead. That's what menopause is, right? It's longevity. And so the interesting thing about the orca is so why do they have menopause? Why would you stop having babies, right? What's the value of being elderly? Well, it's not child care. They're not actually helping out take care of their little killer whale grandbabies. Right. What they're good for is in a time of crisis, when they've run out of local food, those matriarchal, elderly, menopausal killer whales are leading the pod to better food sources. They're leading the pod to new ways of surviving, which is to say, at least in killer whales, but also probably us too, the elderly are valuable for what they know. Yeah. Not just the daycare, though that helps. Such a fascinating book and so many great things to pull. Uh, thank you so much for coming in today, Kat. And thanks, thanks for, for putting me. this together. Ten years of work. I hope you enjoy the book, folks. Thanks. It's called Eve. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.